Hey y'all, wake up Wednesday for you. Now, if you saw last time's so were about strong bunch, this one's about waking up our delicate and our precise. Now we need that a lot in dance, of course, too. So I'm gonna give you a weird suggestion. Hopefully you're getting used to my weird suggestions by now. And my weird suggestion is to bring in some needle and thread for each student. Have them practice threading a needle. You have to be careful, you have to be light and fairly slow. You have to be very precise threading that needle. You know, we give images all the time. You might have even given the image of threading the needle, let's say doing some passe, uh, releve passe or something like that, where you're very precisely going back down through fifth. But there's nothing like giving your students a real life in the moment, fully pure way of being that they can then translate. A lot of times we have a great image and we think it would work, but the truth is if we got into the thought bubble of that student, it's not registering. Maybe they've never done it, or if they have, it didn't make an impression, or it was long ago enough they don't remember it, or they didn't like it. So they hear you say their image, but they actually still reject it and do it their way. But when you actually come in with a prop, first of all, that shows that you care. Hey guys, I love you so much that I collected all this stuff up and remembered and put it in my dance bag just for you today. They're gonna to feel special and cared for and they're gonna be game to try it. Even if they think it's kind of weird. I know that a weird experiment with your students, a fun, weird experience is going to be remembered. So maybe you hand out some needle and thread to everybody and you just practice it. And then of course, do it with the other hand. This is good for the brain. And then they know what it's really like to have to be precise and careful. And then the piece you bring to their attention. When I'm being delicate, precise, and careful, maybe extra slow, maybe with my non-dominant hand, do I have weird tension habits that happen? Did my shoulders come up? Did I do something with my jaw? Did my lips go in? Or you can see with young kids, if you remember the mouthing reflex, they might stick their tongue out or to their tongue or something. So you can bring to their attention. Maybe you do a little jaw relaxing thing, a little hands on the hips, a little head movements, keep things relaxed, shoulder sponge, something. And then you do and say, what's it like to have such delicate control with no tension? Then you can put away your needle and thread and have a focus of that concept and see where it shows up, particularly if you're doing some point work something very delicate or spring points for the younger kids. What's it like to be delicate and controlled without becoming tense? When we control our flow for something like threading the needle, it's super easy to become tense. Of course, that's not our desire. So give them the chance to feel it happening or not happening and then translate it into the full body. Okay, so that's it for today. Waking up, delicate control minus the tension. Enjoy. Let me know how it goes. Bye-bye.